Hi, I'm Shane from Sitecode and in this small presentation, we will look at the configuration and components required to create a new connection in Sitecode Rocks. So once we have installed Sitecode Rocks as Visual Studio plugin, the next logical step is to create a connection. In order to connect to Sitecore instance, Sitecore Rocks provides with two data providers, namely the good old web service and hard rock service. The good old service is the default web service available in Sitecore since Sitecore version 6.0. It is named as service and lives in Sitecore.client assembly at Sitecore.visual namespace. You may use good old web service in your API calls in production environment. The hard rock service named as service2 inherits from good old web service and extends its capabilities by adding the possibility to invoke execute methods in classes in the namespace sitecore.rocks.server.request. The hard rock service lives in sitecore.rocks.server assembly at sitecore.visual namespace. We will explore both the services in the following demo. As already discussed, hard rock service is specific to Sitecore Rocks and is updated frequently with Sitecore Rocks release. Therefore, it should not be used in production environment as it may not be stable and safe for production environment. Let's look at hostname setting. The hostname is the name of Sitecore instance we wish to connect. It could be a local running instance or a hosted instance. The next configuration required to connect is credentials. These are our Sitecore credentials. The credentials are passed in plain text, so you may not like to connect to production Sitecore instance using Sitecore Rocks. We can also connect to Sitecore Rocks using Active Directory credentials. We will explore the same in a future presentation. The last optional setting, location, is the physical path to the Sitecore web root. We specify the physical address of Sitecore web root. Depending upon the location of the instance, we may have access to physical path or not. In case we have the instance running locally, in all probability, we would have access to physical path. If the instance is hosted remotely, we may not have the access to physical path. The disadvantage of not having access to physical path is that we have to manually install, update, and uninstall Sitecore Rocks and other Rocks extension. On the other hand, the advantage of having access to physical path is that Sitecore Rocks lets us easily install, update, and uninstall Sitecore Rocks DLL and other Rocks extension easily and automatically. It also knows where the physical files are in the file system and adds lots of other useful features. Okay, let's go and have a look at how to create a connection in Sitecore instance. Let's begin with bringing Sitecore Explorer. Click on Sitecore menu. Choose Sitecore Explorer. This brings up Sitecore Explorer for us. We may create a new Sitecore connection by choosing the shortcut Sitecore button or selecting New Connection from Sitecore Rock menu. Click the New Connection command and this brings up Sitecore Rock's Connection dialog box. Let's look at the required settings. From the two data provider, choose Hard Rock Web Service as it is more powerful with capability to invoke execute commands. In the hostname setting, choose the instance you would like to connect. In this case, I would love to connect to a locally running instance called SC7 on my machine. If you wish, you can also connect to any hosted instance by providing the URL. I will choose my local running instance. The next two settings are user credentials. These are our Sitecore credentials. By default, they will be prefilled with Sitecore admin credentials. One can also provide active directory credentials here. We will look at how to achieve this in a different presentation. 
Sitecore Core Rocks automatically detects and prefills the physical path to web root of your Sitecore instance. You should only provide this setting if you have physical access to Sitecore web root. In case your instance is running remotely and you don't have physical access to Sitecore web root, you will have to manually install Sitecore.rocks.server assembly into the bin folder of Sitecore instance. Let's remove the location for a moment. The moment I remove location, you can see the automatically upgrade server component option and automatically update hard rock web service and plugin options on login become unavailable. So having the physical access makes it easy for Sitecore Rock to keep on upgrading the server component and automatically update hard rock web service and plugin. Now let's test our configurations. Click the test button. It brings up a confirmation requesting you to copy the Sitecore.rocks.server assembly in the bin folder. Choose yes. This brings up the update server components dialog. Choose Sitecore.rocks.server to install and uncheck others. I have a few more Sitecore Rocks extensions installed on my machine. For now, I will uncheck not to install them. Click update. This prompts you to choose the web root of your Sitecore instance. For me, it is Sitecore 7 website. Click OK. It will copy the assemblies into the bin folder and gives you a nice little confirmation. Click OK. And OK again to retain the connection. Now we can look at our Sitecore instance in Sitecore Explorer. In future, if you need the same settings to connect to any other instance, you can use the nice little functionality copy from and it will populate all of your configurations. Now let's explore what has been installed on our system. Now once we are connected, let's explore the components installed by Sitecore Rocks. Sitecore Rocks installs Sitecore.rocks.server assembly in the bin folder of Sitecore instance. Depending upon our installation, if we are using other Sitecore Rocks extensions, we may have other DLLs as well. For example, Sitecore.rocks.server.speak. In order to uninstall Sitecore Rocks service, we may manually remove the DLLs from the bin folder or we can use Sitecore Rocks context menu command connections and then choose to remove server components. Always remember to remove Sitecore Rocks assembly from production environment for safety. Let's have a quick look at how to find and uninstall Sitecore Rocks service. Let's confirm the presence of Sitecore.rocks.server DLL into the bin folder of our Sitecore instance. Drill down to your Sitecore instance. In my case, it is Sitecore 7. Let's go to the website directory and choose bin folder and try to locate Sitecore.rocks.server DLL. And here we find it. In order to remove Sitecore Rocks from production environment, I can simply remove Sitecore.rocks.server DLL or I can use Sitecore Rocks to do it for me. Choose your instance, right click, select connections and choose remove server components. Sitecore Rocks confirms and deletes it for you. Let's go and confirm the deletion. And as we see, the Sitecore Rocks has been uninstalled. If you are curious about Sitecore Rocks, we can explore the DLL using object browser available into Visual Studio. Click view, select object browser, Choose Custom Component Set and click on the ellipsis next to it. Choose the Sitecore.rocks.server DLL. Click Add. Click OK. 
and now you will be able to look at the DLL. Expand and go to sitecode.visual namespace. Expand the namespace and you will find hard rock service named as service2. Please note service2 inherits from sitecode.visual.service which is the good old web service. Also look at the methods like execute. Let's look at the good old web service. You can navigate to good old web service by just clicking this link. This brings us into a different DLL as already noted called sitecode.client. Let's look at the good old web service. Now you should be able to explore good old web service on your own. We welcome your feedback. Please provide your comments or feedback on YouTube video channel. Please also tell us what is the next topic of your choice or what is the next feature you would like to learn. Sideco Rock is a passion of the rock guy with Twitter handle at the rock guy. Thanks for watching.